This is section 8.4 in proper integrals. If we're given a function that has a uh, asymptote at x equals 0, so here's the function. Uh, the asymptote is at uh, y equals 0, that is. Uh, this curve will infinitely approach the asymptote, but will never touch, unless we can get to infinity. And in theory, we can reach infinity, and that's really what calculus is all about. To deal with this infinite area, but yet reaching infinity, we could have a value for the area under the curve. And if we have a value, we say that the function converges, or the answer converges. If we work the problem, we take it out to infinity, uh, and it doesn't have an answer, we say that the answer diverges. We don't have an answer. Now look at this function. It is approaching y equals 0 forever, but in theory, like I said, we can reach infinity, and so it will eventually touch. Now to deal with this infinite area, we do the integral, and we go from 0 to some value b. And then we find the limit as b approaches infinity. That way we can take the integral and then deal with the infinite part using limits. In the definition, we have improper integrals with infinite integration limits. Integrals with infinite limits of integration are improper integrals. So there's some uh, terminology we can use. Number one, if f of x is continuous on a to infinity, then we can split that and we can go from a to b. And then once we do the integration, we'll just take the limit as b approaches infinity. Number two, if f of x is continuous on negative infinity to b, then uh, we use a variable for the negative infinity. So we're going from a to b. We can do work the integration. and. Uh, then find the limit as A approaches negative infinity. And number three is a combination of one and two. And like I said, if we end up having an answer, we say that the limit converges and we have a value for the limit. If we don't have a value for the limit, we say that the answer does not exist, the limit fails to exist, and then the improper integral diverges. In example one, we have improper integrals as limits. So express the improper integral, negative infinity to infinity of e to the x dx in terms of limits of definite integrals and then evaluate the integral. We're going to split this into really two problems. We're going to do the limit as a approaches negative infinity, and then we'll go from a to some value. Let's make that value zero. Now we got to find, we got to use some value and Usually, 0 is the easiest one to work with. So we have e to the x dx. We're going to add that to the limit as b approaches infinity. And then we'll go from 0 to b of e to the x. Uh, now we can take the integral of both and then find the limits. So we have the limit as a approaches negative infinity of e to the x evaluated from a to 0 plus the limit as b approaches infinity of e to the x from 0 to b. Uh, next step, we have limit as a approaches negative infinity. Uh, and then we have e to the 0 minus e to the a plus limit as b approaches infinity of e to the b minus e to the 0. Now, e to the 0 is going to be 1, so we have uh, the limit as a approaches negative infinity of negative e 1 minus e to the a plus the limit as b approaches infinity of e to the b minus, whoops, minus 1. And now when we plug in uh, the negative infinity and the infinity, we have 1 minus e to the negative infinity plus e to the infinity minus 1. Well, the e to the negative infinity becomes e, uh, not e, but 1 over e to infinity plus uh, e to the infinity becomes infinity. And infinity minus 1 is still infinity. So we have 1 minus 0 plus infinity. 1 plus infinity, that's not an answer. This particular problem diverges uh, because there is no answer to the problem. Let's look at example two. 
evaluating an improper integral on one to infinity. Does the improper integral one to infinity converge or diverge? Well, let's find out. We're going to do the limit as b approaches infinity <clears throat> of the integral from 1 to b of 1 over x dx. The antiderivative of 1 over x is the natural log of x. So we have the limit as b approaches infinity of the natural log of x, and we're going to evaluate that from 1 to b. So we have the limit as b approaches infinity of the natural log, natural log of b minus the natural log of 1. We have the limit as b approaches infinity of the natural log of b, and that's going, uh, natural log of 1 is 0. So this is the natural log of infinity, which shoots off to infinity. So here's another one that diverges. In example three, we're using partial fractions with improper integrals. So we're going to evaluate from zero to infinity of that function or state that it diverges. So we're going to find the limit as b approaches infinity of the integral from zero to b of two over x squared plus four x plus three. I'm going to fast forward uh, the, the process to find the, uh, the integral using um, partial fraction. I have fast forward showing the work for uh, doing the integration using partial fractions. And we're down at the last line here. The limit as b approaches infinity of the natural log of the absolute value of x plus 1 over x plus 3. We're going to evaluate this from 0 to b. So I'm going to plug b in. So we have the limit as b approaches infinity of the natural log of the absolute value of b plus 1 over b plus 3 minus the natural log of, when we plug 0 in, in both of the x's, we get 1 third. So natural log of 1 third. Now we're going to take the limit as b approaches infinity. Uh, if I have infinity over infinity, the plus 1 and the plus 3 don't matter, of course. So we end up taking the natural log of 1. Remember your um, ending behavior when the powers are the same, you use the ratio. And that's really what plugging infinity is. It's finding ending behavior. So we have the natural log of 1 minus, or in this case, we have plus the natural log of 3. Now, how do we get to natural log of 3? Well, we have minus natural log of really 3 to the negative 1. By the power rule, we can bring the negative 1 down, making that plus natural log of 3. So that's where we get plus natural log of 3. Natural log of 1 of 0 plus natural log of 3 is we finally have one that has an answer. The answer is the natural log of 3. Example 4, we're going to use L'Hopital's rule with improper integrals. We're going to integrate from 1 to infinity of x e to the negative x. So we have the limit as b approaches infinity of the integral from 1 to b of x e to the negative x dx. This integral uh, is set up perfectly for the tabular method. So I need one function to, to be the derivative and one function to be the integral. So I'll put x here. That goes to 0 when we do the derivative. And we have e to the negative x. The derivative of x is 1. Derivative of 1 is 0. The antiderivative of e to the x is negative e to the negative x. And then the antiderivative again is e to the negative x. Next, we draw the diagonal arrows, and we put plus and then a minus. We always start with plus. So now we have the limit as b approaches infinity of negative x e to the negative x minus e to the negative x. We're going to evaluate that from 1 to b. Well, we can simplify this a little bit to make our calculations a little bit more manageable. I can take a negative e to the negative x out, and we're left with x plus 1. And we're evaluating that still from 1 to b is equal to the limit as b approaches infinity of, let's see, negative e to the negative b times 1 plus, no, nope, not 1 plus, but b plus 1. I don't think it would really matter either way. And then minus negative e to the negative 1. 
uh, times 1 plus 1. And there we have it. So we have the limit as b approaches infinity of negative b plus 1 over e to the b. And then we have plus 2 over e. Now when we do the limit of this, I can split the limit over both of them. So we have the limit as b approaches infinity of negative b plus 1 over e to the b plus the limit as b approaches infinity of 2 over e, and 2 over e is just a constant. Now if we plug infinity into the first one, we would get negative infinity plus 1 over e to the infinity, which would be negative infinity over infinity, which is an indeterminate integral, or uh, excuse me, an indeterminate uh, limit. So we can use L'Hopital's rule and take the derivatives of the top and the bottom. So we have the limit as b approaches infinity of negative 1 over e to the b. And the limit of any constant is just that constant. So we have 2 over e. Finally, we can plug infinity into the first one. We have negative 1 over e to the infinity plus 2 over e. And negative 1 divided by infinity is 0. So the answer is 2 over e. Example 5, evaluating an integral on negative infinity <clears throat> to infinity. Uh, we're going to split this one up. We're going to go from a to some constant 0. We're going to take the limit as a approaches negative infinity of 1 over 1 plus x squared dx. And then we're going to add that to the limit as b approaches infinity uh, of the integral from 0 to b of 1 over 1 plus x squared dx. The antiderivative of 1 over 1 plus x squared is the inverse tangent. We have the limit as a approaches negative infinity of the inverse tangent of x evaluated from a to 0 plus the limit as b approaches infinity of inverse tangent evaluated from 0 to b. Now let's take a look at the graph of inverse tangent very quickly. Uh, down here we have negative pi over 2. Up here we have pi over 2. And the tangent, inverse tangent function, looks like that. And it's important uh, to remember that when we start evaluating this problem. And then we have some asymptotes at negative pi over 2 and pi over 2. Uh, let's go back to the problem. We have the limit as a approaches negative infinity of the inverse tangent of 0 minus the inverse tangent of a plus the limit as b approaches infinity of the inverse tangent of b minus the inverse tangent of 0. The inverse tangent of 0 is 0. You can see in the graph we have the point 0, 0. So we have 0 minus the inverse tangent of infinity plus, excuse me, not infinity, but negative infinity, plus the inverse tangent of infinity minus 0 again. Well, the inverse tangent of negative infinity, you can see as the inverse tangent approaches negative infinity, the function is approaching negative pi over 2, so we have negative negative pi over 2, plus, and as the function uh, value approaches infinity, excuse me, the, the function that we, the value we plug in to inverse tangent, as that approaches infinity, the function is approaching pi over 2. So we have a positive pi over 2 plus another positive pi over 2. That answer is pi over 4. No, excuse me, not pi over 4. What was that? That was silly. Uh, the answer is pi.